Let me count the reasons why we might hate Richard Vobes. For some, it's just his appearance, the way he dresses, that combination of waistcoat, short-sleeved shirt, and cravat, combined with his toothy, smarmy grin. People have described his appearance as punchable, although I hasten to add, not me, because I'm not the sort of person who calls for violence, even against a person as loathsome as Richard Vobes. For others, the reason why they might hate him is more to do with those meandering monologues he does every day, those talks to camera where he basically just talks nonsense for 15 minutes. People find that excessively irritating. But for me, the best reason to hate Richard Vobes is the fact that he promotes obvious grifters and conmen on his channel. He promotes these people who want to rip off his approximately 250,000 subscribers, and he does so with absolute indifference to the suffering that he might cause. That is a perfectly good reason to hate Richard Vobes. And we're going to be covering that today, because today we, we have one of the most truly brazen grifters on the internet. A, a man whose grift is so preposterous that any sane person would immediately laugh him out of the room. But that, in fact, isn't the most ridiculous thing about this person. So I give you Allegedly Dave. Idea. I've had an idea, yeah. <laughs> so it's always good when you get an idea. But you said that you woke up with this idea. Yeah, um, I just literally woke up in the, you know, at four or five o'clock in the morning and with this idea fully formed in my head, I was like, whoa. There are some people who should be discouraged from having ideas, and Dave Murphy is clearly one of them. When ideas pop up in his mind, fully formed, unbidden, they're generally bad ideas, the sorts of ideas that anybody with a modicum of common sense would quickly rule out as the ramblings of a truly mad person, the, the insane burblings of a charlatan, a grifter, a nutcase. But Dave has no such filter, as we'll see from this delightful documentary that uh, MC Toon was able to provide me with. Uh, and more about him at the end of the show, by the way, because there's, a, there's an important announcement. This is real. This is what Dave Murphy was famous for before he became a, a financial con man. Most people think uh, your wee is a waste product. Um, it's not. I've been on urine therapy for the last year and a half now. What I've got here is, uh, this is, uh, well, this is quite uh, fresh urine. It's, it's maybe um, uh, a, a few weeks old. Part of the uh, therapy is actually to wash your, uh, wash your body with it. And uh, one of the things I do every, every day is uh, wash my face with it, literally. That was recorded approximately 20 years ago, and ever since then, he has not become any more sensible. He's one of the UK's leading proponents of flat Earth cosmology, the, the ludicrous and disproven theory that our Earth is a flat plane existing in some kind of hemispherical firmament, a, a, a ludicrous theory believed only by the most scientifically ignorant people that you could ever find. Uh, that, of course, does not exclude him from being a guest on The Richard Vogue Show. In, in fact, it qualifies him for this esteemed honour. But Dave Murphy is not here to talk about either the flat earth or his strange urinary habits. Today, we're going to introduce a, a bizarre financial grift, a scheme designed to part Richard Vobes' earnest idiot viewers from their hard-earned or possibly stolen money. A and Richard is Flat Earth Pissy Dave's accomplice in this quite bizarre grift. I paid off the water bill with a promissory note, and then I heard nothing from them. Three months go past, I get the next bill from the water board, and mm -hmm. and there, sure enough, was the one I'd paid using my signature. Richard Vobes evidently believes that he paid a utility bill with a handwritten promissory note. He believes that uh, a piece of paper saying, 
I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of, and then whatever amount of money he owed, was some kind of sufficiently valuable financial instrument that he was able to nullify a debt to the, the water company. Uh, I, I think that's a very unlikely claim based on the simple observation that a promise to pay an amount of money in the future is clearly not the same thing as some money. So at best, what might have happened was the worker, or possibly just a, a computer system whose job it was to handle incoming payments, became briefly confused by this truly bizarre thing that Richard Vobes evidently tried to do. But Richard seems to have drawn entirely the wrong conclusion from this bizarre attempt to settle a bill. So I made the mistake of coming on the show and saying it bloody worked. Mm -hmm. But of course, because I put it on the show, too many people probably at once came in. And so when I did the next one, they said, no, no, we don't accept this. This isn't payment. Richard seems to have learned exactly the wrong lesson about what just happened. You see, he tried to pay for a utility bill for gas, electricity or, or power that he had already consumed. And having done so, he eventually received a reply saying, this does not constitute a legitimate payment according to the, the utility company's terms and conditions. Now, any normal person would conclude that that indeed was the case, that you cannot pay for utility bills with a self-scrawled promissory note. But Vobes has jumped to precisely the opposite conclusion. In, in fact, he believes that the only reason this didn't work was that his ideas were too popular, too mainstream, too widely accepted. And actually, the company is engaged in some kind of fraud to deprive him of this incredibly valuable piece of paper that he literally scrawled in a moment. I said, well, I will go away and I'll pay it another way if you send me back the original financial instrument. We're looking at a critical mass of pure idiocy. Who knew that all it took was two people in close proximity? And if you brought two sources of foolishness emitters close together, they would generate particles of idiocy so strong that they would excite the grey matter in each other's brains to create yet more stupidity, thus causing a cascaded reaction in which the levels of measured stupidity are simply off the scale. If there was some kind of analogous device to a Geiger counter that could measure how preposterous the words that were coming out of their mouths were at this moment, I'm sure it would be off the scale. If there was a, a Becquerel scale for pure preposterous nonsense, it would now be beeping and whirling and, and, and pinging uh, to warn you that the best thing any sane person can do at this time is exit the room, because things are about to get truly nonsensical. If they're going to if they're going to say no, we don't accept it. Well, they've got to take you to court and and prove they you know that uh, they don't accept it. By now, the hypothetical Geiger counter we're using to measure the the sheer volume of imbecilic nonsense has probably blown a fuse and is no longer able to register that the sheer quantities of ridiculous twaddle that are gushing forth from the mouths of allegedly Dave and Richard Vogues. Take, for example, Dave's claim that the company would have to prove in a court that it does not accept promissory notes as a form of payment. A, a bizarre notion, because surely a letter from that company saying that it is contrary to the terms and conditions that of the contract that uh, Richard Vobe signed, surely that is proof enough. Uh, I don't know what kind of court would rule otherwise. Uh, and take Richard Vobe's next claim. The, the notion that the promissory note that he has written is worth as much as he imagines it to be. A, a ludicrous notion, because it is just a piece of paper with some writing on it. It is not actually worth anything more than a piece of paper with random scribbles, which, according to my latest estimate, is approximately zero pounds. And they probably securitized it and yeah. made money out of it. And so, you, you know, in the end, I'm going to send them an invoice to say, well, you've got my money. Richard Vobes believes that he's discovered one weird trick to reverse your financial fortune. Turn any debt 
into positive cash flow. How do you do that? Well, you send a promissory note as payment for a utility bill. And then when the utility company eventually destroys that promissory note because it is, in their belief, just a garbage piece of paper, you turn around and you invoice them for the lost promissory note. And your invoice is for the full face value of that promissory note. So if your promissory note was for £1,001, you invoice them for that exact amount of money. And Richard believes that uh, in doing so, you can have the utility company pay you for the gas or electricity that you have consumed. It is brilliant financial jujitsu. This is more exemplary financial engineering than the best minds of Goldman Sachs could ever bring up. It's a strange theory that Richard apparently believes is true. So much so that uh, he's getting all indignant about the fact that the utility company threw away his piece of paper. I can't be liable for your loss once it's been delivered. Right. I've paid it as far as I'm concerned, because it's, it's the same as me just giving them the ready cash. If, if you'd given them um, a, a gold bar, <laughs> yeah, right? uh, accept this as payment, and um, they say, oh no, we don't accept gold bars, but they didn't give you a gold bar back, would you just leave it and go, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. This might seem like the cider-crazed rantings of a pair of drunken village idiots, but it actually has a more malign and malicious purpose. What they're doing here is setting the scene for a con, a grift. But in order to do so, they need to get their audience of a few hundred thousand idiots to accept the, the, the basic premise behind their con. The notion that a promissory note is worth an equivalent amount to cash. The idea that uh, a promissory note might even be worth as much as gold. That's the association that allegedly Dave is trying to plant into the minds of Richard Vobes' utterly gullible viewers. It, it, it's clearly false, and we might find it laughable, but Others might be watching this and, and simply accept the basis, the, the foundation that Richard and Dave are slowly and actually carefully laying. Richard and Dave are trying to sell the audience something. And, and what that something is, we're about to see. So you're going to set up a trust? Yes, I'm going to be the grantor um, and trustee yeah. uh, and um, invite anybody who's got a mortgage to become a beneficiary. There'll be a donation involved, but it should be less than a mortgage payment. So this is the idea that Dave Murphy was referring to at the beginning of the show. It had nothing to do with Richard Vobes' utility bill. That was just softening up the audience. And it had everything to do with soliciting donations from the gullible viewers of the Richard Vobes show in order to put into this magic cauldron of his, because he is going to take all of those donations and, and somehow mix it up with a, a, a pinch of fairy dust and some other bizarre ingredients, and he's going to make an even better kind of promissory note. In fact, the entire lesson they drew from the previous encounters with trying to pay for things with promissory notes wasn't the obvious and true learning, which is that the, the entire idea is preposterous garbage but the entirely wrong and bizarre notion that what they really needed was a better kind of promissory note, perhaps one gilded with gold leaf or with a, a pink rosette. Somehow, David believes that he is going to concoct that. He's going to mix a little bit of cash, a, a dash of fairy dust, and maybe a, just a twist of pepper, and out will come a, a sort of promissory note that is irresistible. So, um, so I've figured out a way, basically, to to give this promissory note um, a, an inherent value that you know isn't there in even their promissory notes. It's an irresistible recipe of eleven herbs and spices plus the cash of Richard Vobes's gullible viewers, which, when combined together, form a, a finger-licking good batter that will prove to make the most irresistible promissory note. Uh, no bank or building society will be able to turn it away. But allegedly Dave is not going to tell us that recipe. It's a secret. He's only going to reveal how he does it to the people who
who have already paid him. Everybody else, well, you're not going to know how he does it, and you're going to be permanently kept in the dark. Because allegedly Dave needs his secrecy. Yeah. So if people were interested in doing this, you'd obviously be telling the individuals who would be making the donation what's going on. I'm just trying to minimise, you know, the information getting out there. So what we know so far is that David is going to solicit donations from Richard's viewers. He's going to concoct them into some kind of financial instrument. And if he does so, this will be offered up as payment for people's mortgages. And David believes that this will be irresistible. It's a strange claim because nobody knows what it is or how he's done it or what the methodology for valuing this hypothetical financial instrument will be. Pay no attention to any of that and simply accept the, the, the basic truth that this is going to be irresistible. This is where I'll, I'll turn, um, I'll, I'll create a, a financial instrument that they can't refuse. There are so many things um, added to this note that means they're going to have an incredibly difficult time to, to actually say, no, this isn't valuable. Nobody could say that Dave's superior promissory note has no value. It's going to be such a challenge for anybody to look at the uh, bizarrely cobbled together financial instrument that resembles a, a handwritten piece of paper with Dave's own ridiculous spidery handwriting. Nobody could look at that and say that this is a worthless load of garbage that cannot be used to pay for a mortgage. We have this on Dave's own authority. And who is Dave? Well, he is the self-described expert who drinks his own urine, who uses it as a facial cleanser. And to me, that would seem like the highest possible authority in matters related to finance and mortgage. David simply cannot be wrong. Yeah, they can see right, they can see the value yeah. of the promise you know, and uh, they can verify the value of the promise you know, but they can't actually get to the assets. So for the bank, this payment is sort of like a carrot on a stick. It's a tantalizing thing that you can see in the future, and maybe you can run towards it, but you're never going to catch it because it's always going to be out of reach. That's the nature of the financial instrument that. Dave has apparently cobbled together. It's a thing that looks valuable, but isn't. So it's a scam. That, that's basically what Dave is saying. It, it's a thing that looks like it might be a form of payment. It's a thing that looks like it will have value, but you can't ever realize that value because the value is always somehow out of reach. And that sounds like the sort of scam that would only fool the dumbest sort of person. And I'm afraid that the, the kinds of people who run the accounts payable departments of most financial organizations, they're probably not that stupid. But I do know a, a kind of person who is that stupid. That's of course the audience of the Richard Vobes show. Those after all are the people who are going to be paying for this thing, but will not of course receive any kind of benefit. We know that because the scheme cannot possibly work. Even based on the scant amount of information that Dave has divulged, we know this thing is a stupid endeavor born from the mind of an imbecile. Nothing good ever comes from such circumstances, and this will not be good. This is an obvious scam. Are they losing that money, that donation, or is it held like a, 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 a bank in, a, in an account that which, if they wanted to call back on that, could they? Well, quite... they're kind of going to lose it as such because it's going to, it's literally, it's going to be sitting there as Something. the asset. If you give Dave Murphy money, you will never see that money again. That money, he says, will go to form the the kernel of some kind of asset. And, and by that, I mean Dave Murphy will be going out and buying himself stuff. He'll probably buy himself a new car, maybe a nice new designer suit, possibly even a new refrigerator because the old one stinks of urine. That money is gone. But David is something of a scammer. He's telling his audience that in return for giving up that money permanently forever, it, putting it into this irreversible trust, they are going to get something far, far better. 
far better than the, the value of the money that they have lost, which he's saying is less than a monthly mortgage payment, he's going to grant them absolution for ever having to pay a mortgage. So even if you've just obtained a mortgage, even if you owe hundreds of thousands to your bank or building society, this one weird trick, this single transaction that you concoct with Dave Murphy is going to absolve you for paying anything forever. Right. Um, but what they gain is their mortgage gone. Is literally the mortgage gone. So all you have to do, apparently, is just hand over a few thousand pounds to Dave Murphy. And he's going to work his magic. That's literally it. At some unspecified time in the future, he will make all of your debts disappear. What could be simpler? But if you, if you want to get involved, then you just say, all right, I'll pledge this, this donation. And uh, I'll, I'll say, OK, I'm going to call in the pledges. Right. And then I'll be able to actually um, start the process and then start issuing promissory notes. So you've handed over £1,000 or £2,000, whatever your monthly mortgage payment is. You've given it in cash to allegedly Dave and he's going to concoct it. He's going to put it in his big golden bucket and, and stir it with all the other money, with all the other strange ingredients that he's going to, to add to the concoction. And out is going to come this perfect promissory note, the er uh, promissory note, the promissory note to end all promissory notes, the promissory note from which there will be no return. And this is going to grant you debt absolution. This is going to be utterly irresistible to the banks or the building society. This is a scheme that in their wildest dreams, Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan could never even dream of. It's something far more elaborate and, and profitable than, than the, the, whatever it is that, that the, the most fevered minds of Enron could have ever concocted themselves. Dave has established himself as the primo financial genius of the entire universe. An idea so dangerous that, if true, could wipe out the notion of debt as we understand it. And Richard Vobes, of course, is on board. Richard Vobes claims he will be the first subscriber to this ridiculous scheme. But of course, the first subscribers will be Richard Vobes's viewers, the people dumb enough to part with their money, desperate enough to be watching the Richard Vobes show and believing in it. Maybe one last hope, one last chance to keep their property. That's the kind of person Dave is. He will take their money knowing that it will hasten their impending bankruptcy. What are we trying to do? Well, uh, essentially, um, create an instrument that will pay off the mortgage. Right. So yes. if you've got a mortgage and you use this instrument using their rules to say, there you go, I'm paying it off. And, and actually, you're not losing anything. Very occasionally, just once in a blue moon, Richard has a sceptical moment. I, I wonder if that tiny brain of his is cogitating the implications of what Dave has just said. Because if we could all instantly get out of debt for free by minting this kind of magical promissory note that removes from us the obligation to ever pay for anything, well then we could all be living in the mansion of our dreams. We could all own that super yacht. We could have as much cocaine as our noses could allow and we wouldn't have to pay for anything. We would all be living the life of Elon Musk and, and whatever drug-addled billionaires we aspire to be. But clearly that isn't the case. Clearly I live the same life of a tawdry wretch that I always have done. And no magical trick, not even one worked by the, the presidigitator hand of pissy Dave, could ever lift me from the mire that I find myself in. That, unfortunately, is the truth that I find myself in. And maybe Richard also believes that. Maybe he looks at his circumstances, his two-up, two-down house in wording that stinks of pipe tobacco, filled with the detritus of his life, and he wonders, could there truly be an escape from this, this life that I have created for myself, this hell in which I am divorced from all sanity, from all that is good and pure, including his own children. Surely Richard Vobes at this moment knows that there can be no hope or salvation because everything in his life is ruined. No man like P. 
PC Dave is ever going to hand a solution this evening, not even for £2,000. It's just not possible. And maybe Richard Vobes knows it. And I, and I mean, I know you and I trust you and, and, and all of that, but I'm just sort of, I know I have to sometimes ask these difficult questions, which, but I think you've battered it away by saying, well, the money's in the trust. It's not your money. You're helping people get out of their mortgage. They say to be an effective con man, you must first con yourself. And Richard Vobes is truly the exemplar of this principle because he will donate money that he has received in donation from his idiot gullible supporters to allegedly Dave's clearly preposterous scheme. And when it fails, because it must and because it cannot do otherwise, Richard will not blame his own stupidity. He won't blame his gullible lack of gumption when it comes to clearly obvious frauds. He won't blame the idiots who gave his money that is now lost. And he certainly won't blame allegedly Dave, the con man whose ridiculous idea will definitely fail. He'll blame the system. He'll blame the banks for not accepting Dave's preposterous scrawled piece of paper. He will blame the courts for judging him a fraud when he tries to pay for this mortgage and is found to be a, a con man himself for engaging in substituting cash for something which clearly is not cash. He will blame literally everybody but the people responsible for this fraud when the fraud inevitably fails. You know, the uh, Bill of Exchange Act 1882 basically says that a promissory note is cash. Can people pledge with their own promissory <laughs> notes? <laughs> Not really because, no. yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be because um, I'm going to have to uh, acquire certain things. Yes, and, no, uh, I understood. What have we learned from this escapade, this delve into the bizarre lives of Richard Vobes and Dave Murphy? Well, apparently, they want us to believe that promissory notes are as good as cash, which means if you're a bank, building society, water company, electricity provider, or the uh, supplier of gas to either of those individuals' homes, then they should be prepared to accept one of Dave's bizarrely concocted promissory notes in lieu of cash. Apparently, it's just as good. But if you're Dave Murphy soliciting donations for one of his projects, then he will only accept cash. And the reason given is because he wants to pay for some stuff. Now, it may be possible that, for example, the power generating company also wants to pay for stuff, such as the, uh, the salaries of all of the people who work for the power stations, for example. Those are stuff that the, the power company may want to pay for. All those people that work for that generation facility. That doesn't seem to have occurred to either Richard or Dave. And I don't think they've really thought anything through. They're, they're not particularly deep thinkers. Or if they are, they're counting on the fact that the Richard Vobes show audience are even dumber, even less capable of thinking for themselves. And, and so before they actually have the moment to, to contemplate whether this scheme is purest insanity, they will simply hand over the cash to Dave and Dave will do what he does. And what will he do? Well, apparently buy stuff, cars, clothes, and maybe even a vacation. After all, a brilliant mind like his needs some rest and relaxation. So back to the original question, why do we hate Richard Vobes? Is it his bizarre old man affectations, the, the suit, the cravat, the, the smoking of the pipe and, and uh, that toothy grin? Is it the way he opines and pontificates for 15 minutes a day, those ludicrous opinions? Or is it, as I contend, the real reason we should truly hate Richard Vobes, the reason why we should hold him in the lowest possible regard is the fact that he embraces and promotes obvious grifters and con men on an almost daily basis. And that is the primary function of the Richard Vogue show. Any normal person when confronted by such obvious grifting should respond with utter, complete uh, revulsion. That is the only human response. And now before I go, a brief message from my sponsor, my sponsor is a man that we all know and love. His name is MC Toon. He is the ultimate fighter against flirtdom. People like Allegedly Dave. In fact, if you want less Allegedly Dave in the world, 
we want more MC2. They are indeed the polar opposites to each other. And I'm going to hand over to him for 30 seconds because nobody can sell it like he can. Hey, I'm MC Toon and uh, I destroy flat earthers for fun. Now you may know some flat earthers on uh, YouTube or social media or maybe in your life. Sorry about that if you do. Anyway, um, I am going to go to Antarctica in December to completely demolish flat earth because flat earthers have been claiming for a long time that there is no 24 hour circling sun in Antarctica because it would destroy their very idea of flat earth. It could not happen. So I'm going there and uh, somebody is paying for some flat earthers to go too. So I get to witness flat earthers and then here as they go to their tents at night, well, there's no night, it's always day, but once they go into their tents to sleep, they can cry themselves to sleep. Maybe I can get a little recording of that. Anyway, it's a little expensive to go. I would love it if you could help my fundraiser. I'm sure Raynard will put a link to the, both the fundraiser and to one of my videos talking about it in the description. If nothing else though, if you want to just share that video around on on your social media to the flat earthers that are uh, that you know and then follow along so subscribe to my channel so you can watch the progression as I completely destroy all of their hopes and dreams. It's going to be glorious. Cheers. I've got I forgot my deep breath. So.